Good morning, everybody. Eugene Bear here on YouTube. Let's get right to it. Quick sip of coffee, lukewarm. Today's teaching is approaching from the sixth side up to the trap door and the floor. Now, it is the responsibility of a teacher to teach the truth of the Word of God. Out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. So two is the minimum true witness. <clears throat> now, when you've been reading the Word 43 years and teaching it, you form theologies and opinions. You can't help but do that. So I'm going to call <clears throat> my opinions... What if? Because something came to me. I was watching the lead of, leader of Israel speak. I can't say his name properly, so I won't. Uh, I have a personal love and respect for the man. Jerusalem. A mountain. Gentiles on the mountain. Jews in Jerusalem. Do you know there's a parable about that? The woman at the well spoke of her fathers, and her fathers told her that Messiah Christ anointed one was coming, and when he came, he would explain all truth. What she didn't know is Messiah Christ anointed one was standing right there asking her for some water from the well of Jacob back to the mountain and the city. A lot of talk about building a third temple. They're taking very little scripture to back up that idea. Does God need a third temple? No. Because by the Lord Jesus Christ, once for all, human body, human blood, the sin barrier is taken down. He's the forerunner, access. He's gone in, ascended and seated, and mediator between God and man. God, and in the heavenly Jerusalem in Revelation, there's no temple. So why does God need a third temple? He doesn't. Because the heavenly city doesn't even have a temple. Now, where should the temple be? Should it be on the big plateau where the Dome of the Rock is, and Islam has their one of three sacred places on earth? that they value when there is a great possibility that Jerusalem that the Lord walked in is in absolute total ruin because of what he said not one stone shall be left upon another that stone are mad made square stones for walls and for temples literally torn down till there's nothing but mountain dirt, earth, no man-made stones. And Zion and the city of David and the temple of God could be, could have been located south of the existing plateau and south of the Wailing Wall, southeast of the Wailing Wall, which the wall is not one of the original foundations of the temple. Now, the mountain. The mountain represents a place on earth that the woman spoke of. And I'm going to read some scripture here. We're in four minutes. A place on earth like the city. Now, all these different Christian relation, uh, religions, denominations, ran to Jerusalem to set up their church. When the way the new covenant of grace, the newest sect out of Judaism called the Way, they were standing in synagogue, raising their hands, calling on Messiah Christ anointed, Jesus of Nazareth, confessing his name, that he was the Messiah Christ anointed, Son of God, Son of Man, the Lord. The Way was trying, uh, Paul was trying to extinguish the new sect stomp it out so the way left Jerusalem and moved north it got up to Antioch where the spirit was moving 
and filling Jew and Gentile with the Spirit at Antioch in Syria. So Barnabas goes up there, then he runs a little further north to Tarsus to get Paul to bring him back to Antioch. And there the Spirit chooses Barnabas and Antioch. And they took a fourth, because the Holy Spirit of Truth, Barnabas, Antioch, and John Mark. That makes four. <laughs> the Spirit started with three men. All right? And the fourth man quit the first missionary journey and went back to Jerusalem. But Paul knew the usefulness of John Mark. Just before his death, he asked Timothy to bring John Mark with him. The nephew of Barnabas, I believe. Okay, back to the mountain. Talking about location here, and these are my personal opinions. Because most Bible scholars don't like it when I say, after 33 AD, the Lord started the New Testament, the New Covenant of Grace. Part 2. Now, today, the new Part 2, Grace, Faith, and Mercy, under the New Testament, under the Lord Jesus Christ, head of His spiritual body. The spiritual head of His spiritual body. Part 1 is to fade away. That's what Scripture says in Hebrews. We are in Part 2. We're living in Part 2. Get into Part 2. Study the Word in Part 2. Study the New Testament. Study the last six letters of Paul. Why? The Spirit through Paul, started the first 25 years of the Christ-anointed church. I'm not a Christian. Too much junk, too much baloney going down in, under the word Christian. I am a Christ-anointed believer in the Lord Jesus Christ raised from the dead. And that church started by the Lord at His resurrection in 30 A.D., advances to 40 A.D., Antioch, advances to 50 A.D. in Ephesus, which is the capital of the Roman power in Asia Minor at that time. And it also is the headquarters of the Christ-anointed church for the next 70 to 80 to 300 plus years. Elders, deacons, bishops, prophets, Teachers come out of the headquarters of Ephesus. Jerusalem is not the headquarters for, it might be for Christianity, but it's not for the first church, the early church, the Christ anointed church that the Spirit and Paul started with Barnabas and with John Mark. That's the truth. That's my personal opinion. But there are very few Bible scholars that will give Ephesus the headquarters of the Christ-anointed church. They want to put the beginning in the headquarters, which is a half-truth, back in Jerusalem. So everybody, every denomination has got their church around and about Jerusalem, and they're all missing where the temple was. It was south of the plateau that the Dome of the Rock is on. They don't have to build them side by side on the plateau. Go over the wall south to where they took down Mount Zion. They leveled it. They removed every stone that was made by man and leveled it to dirt and dust and earth ground valley. And it's not on a particular mountain or location or at Jerusalem. It's in the spirit in your heart mind, in your spirit soul. The kingdom of God is within you. It's ever living word. It's ever living spirit. It's immortality. It's eternal. It's a heavenly Jerusalem city without a temple. In the center of it is the light and the glory of God that illuminates it. It doesn't need, it doesn't need the sun, the moon, and the stars to illuminate it. The glory light of God illuminates the heavenly city, New Jerusalem, that comes down out of heaven. It's not a location of a mountain on earth or a city, Jerusalem, on earth. Now, Jerusalem might be the capital of 4,000 years 
of a special nation on earth, Israel, but Jerusalem is not the headquarters and the capital of the Christ-anointed church. And that capital, which was Ephesus, is gone because the headquarters capital should be within you, Christ in you, the Spirit in you, the Word in you, living in you. Am I wrong? Could be, but that's kind of how I see it. All right. So, the, let me, I got to read real quick. It's 10 minutes. I got to end with scripture. I held my coffee all the way through that, Christy. John, the Gospel of John 4.21. Jesus said to her, the Lord Jesus said to her, Head, great high priest forever, Lord of lords, King of kings, and is spiritual within you, Christ in you. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, and the Lord has told me we're in the last hour of God's time clock. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. The subject is about worshiping the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. Ye know, we know what we worship. I'm reading King James 16.11. For salvation, Shua, salvation, Shua, Messiah, Christ anointing. That's what this is all about. When Messiah, when Christ comes, he will tell us all things are all truth. And he tells the woman that he is Messiah, Christ anointing come, standing before her. The prophet, she perceives that he's a prophet. He told her about her whole life. Twelve minutes, I gotta hurry. But the hour cometh and now is, now, today, the new, the second is better that I teach. When the true truth worshiper shall worship the El Father in spirit and in truth within, not on a mountain, not in Jerusalem. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a one spirit holy and is as in italicized letters. So it should read, God a spirit. Not God is a spirit. God a spirit. And he's the one, he's the A one spirit holy. God a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you can't have agape love without the truth of God. And you can't have the spirit of God without the truth of God. God is truth. And the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And the Lord Jesus saith unto her in red letters, I that speak to you, I that speak unto thee am he. I am the Messiah Christ anointed, son of man, son of God. And I'm going to die and take down the sin barrier, precious body, precious blood, ransom payment. It'll do its job, and my spirit will go through and beyond death. I will walk again on the earth. When you destroy this temple, I will raise it up on the third day. And he wasn't speaking about 46 years of constructing a temple of which Israel thinks they need to build a third temple, and they don't. It's all within all within spirit soul, all within heart mind, all within a clear, clean conscience, all within free will, choosing light and good and truth and light, glory, power of God within. No mountain, no place, no temple. I could be wrong. And I believe that Ephesus for the first 75 to 80 to 90 years on for 300 years was the headquarters for the early Christ anointed church with this, which the Spirit and Barnabas and Paul and John Mark started out of Antioch 40 AD. But the headquarters was in Ephesus by 50 AD and on. Love ya. Bye.
headquarters, 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 Ephesus, 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 Ephesus.